and welcome to this week's News Desk. We're recording on Monday 29th of August, the start of the US Open. This is Season 4, Episode 33, and I'm Chris Stafford. And across the pond is Nancy Gillen, as always, Nancy. This is our fourth season, and I can't remember how many episodes we've done all right. Well, this is 33 of the fourth, so we've been doing mostly weekly, haven't we? We've missed a few, but I think we've racked up quite a few episodes all in all. Yeah, we have. And just always something new to talk about. Um, just shows how much women's sport there is really going on. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, uh, it, it does. And we've had so much diversity this year. We were talking about it before we started recording. Uh, the diversity that there's been this summer has been extraordinary. Um, the, the different sports that we've covered and it's honing down a little bit more as we change seasons. Won't be long before we get skiing back though, Nancy. So stand by for that. Yeah, I mean, that, that always seems to come around super quick. But yeah, like you said, we've had so many, quite a few multi-sport competitions happening this summer. Um, obviously the Euros, things like the W Series, so much tennis. It's, it has been a brilliant summer. Um, it really has. And of course, we've had the Commonwealth Games. Yeah. And we've had the European and the World uh, Athletics Championships. What a year for athletes. Um, but, yeah, I think at the end of the year we're going to have a lot to talk about as we review 2022. Um, and and then we're going to be starting talking more about Paris, aren't we, because we're only a couple of years away. Yeah, that, that I think that's the thing that's probably the most bizarre. Um, it seems like, well, the Tokyo Olympics were only last year, but um, obviously because they were pushed back because of... Um, covid we now only have two years to go until paris which seems very strange but also very exciting yeah lots to look forward to as you said a great deal of, of women's sport and we've got a few different things we've got of course we've got football because it is still the nwsl uh, season here and you're about to start your wsl season over there in the uk we talked about some retirements over there last week uh, if you were listening to the show we spoke about a couple of retirements one of whom was alan white so she's part of a stories story this week um but I, I want to kick off with the tennis nancy because of course the us open started just today so it is uh, as we're recording it's two o'clock eastern here um in the US and they've had a morning of play so quite a few games have got an underway quite a packed schedule in that first round anything that stands out for you um I'm well mainly I'm waiting for um this kind of this evening uh tomorrow morning early morning for us um I think I'm really interested to see uh, how Emma Raducanu does uh obviously just for me because as a British um player she's kind of in the press over here but then also defending champion I think it's just really interesting to see how she does because it was such an incredible achievement last year um she hasn't really managed to sustain that form that that got her that historic victory um last year so yeah maybe she'd just be able to kind of get it together again for this year's tournament but interested to see how she does there yeah, Fernandez, of course, Lena Fernandez, is she who was Layla, who was a opponent in the final, the runner-up for the U.S. Open final last year. Uh, she's playing today as well, uh, so that's I think that's one of the last games today. Uh, Layla is playing Dodin of France, and um, and so what time is is Emma playing? Emma Raducanu. Well, it's part of the evening session, which for here starts at midnight, so. She'll probably come out onto the court later uh, than midnight. Of you know, it all depends on on how the matches all go, how long they take. So it's going to be pretty pretty early morning over here. I think I think I'll unfortunately be asleep, so won't be able to catch it. Um, which is kind of weird. It's similar with um, Serena Williams as well. Obviously, at her last tournament, I could just wake up and she could have lost. Um, so you kind of miss those big moments when it's in the middle of the night. But you know. I think that the scheduling gets a bit better. I remember being able to watch a lot of Raducanu's matches uh, later on in the stages last year. Um, so I think the scheduling gets a bit nicer for us over here as the tournament progresses. Yeah, it gets a bit kinder. And I know Simone Halp's playing today. Coco Goff is also playing today. Um, yeah, so there's a few a few games there for us to look out for. We'll have something to talk about. And, and also you mentioned um, Serena Williams. She's playing... Kovacic later today. I think that's 7 o'clock this evening, our time. So, yeah, lots to look forward to. This is just day one of the US Open. Um, and are we? St do we still have a favourite? Are you 
Are you naming in your favourite yet, or is it too early for that? It's re- it is pretty early. Um, I think just <laughs> there doesn't obviously we had Swiatek completely dominate the women's uh, side of tennis at the start of this year, but she hasn't been as formidable since. So it's really really hard to kind of predict someone. Um, I really think Coco Goff might have quite a good chance because she's just been in good form and she's got like the home crowd behind her. Um, Daria Kastakina, the Russian tennis player, I think she's been in quite good form as well. So, and you mentioned Simona Halep. I feel um, she's had a bit of a resurgence. She knows what it's like to win a Grand Slam. So, she's another name. I know I've just said three people, but it is really hard to kind of pin it down to, to one person. Um, yeah, so I'm excited to see in the coming days like who's actually playing well um, at the tournament itself, and then probably have to make a prediction in the second or third round. Yeah. Okay. All right. No pressure right now. But also, we we should mention Anzia Bo, who's been on cracking form. She's playing Madison Brengel this afternoon. Yes, the Wimbledon uh, ons got to Wimbledon final, didn't she? So, yeah. yeah, she knows what it's like. She hasn't got a Grand Slam title to her name yet, but came very close at Wimbledon. So, yeah, yeah I imagine yeah. she'd be hoping to to go all the way to the final, if not better, again. Uh, yeah, well, that, yeah, and she's so popular, isn't she, on the circuit? She is, yeah, and she seems really popular with uh, just the fans and crowd as well. I remember in that Wimbledon final, she was very well supported. Um, So, yeah, very popular figure. Yeah, and it's nice and hot. Yeah, we always have it hot in New York in August. Uh, It's not cooling down at all. all. We're actually getting uh, temperatures in the 90s this week. So, yeah, it's going to be sizzling up there. All right. Uh, well, we'll look out for that because uh, Raducanu is in that first round going to be playing Alice Cune, the French girl. That's at 7 o'clock, actually, tomorrow evening. Not today, but tomorrow. All right, well, moving on. Let's move on to some football, soccer, because there is a few items of news here. And we, we, we also t- talk and we text through the week and when we see things that pop out and there was a couple of real highlights this week and we mentioned it before Nancy how the two US veterans uh, um, Alex Morgan and Megan Rapino are on such cracking form both scoring I think uh, 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 Alex Morgan scored her 51st goal NWSL goal this um, past weekend uh, so she's in cracking form, and, and Megan Rapino, well, she's been assisting and, and scoring in every game. It, the, it seems the last four games, five games now, she's on cracking form too. So they're really making a statement about you know their desire to feature in another World Cup, aren't they? Yeah, definitely. I think it's on a lot of people's minds this World Cup next summer, and yeah, there's definitely been a lot of talk, hasn't there, about the place of players like Rapino and Morgan in the um, US women's national team. Um, I think especially with this new generation of players that's, that are coming through and definitely threatening their places. But yeah, they're fully making a case to stay in the squad and, and be at the World Cup next year. They certainly are. And we should mention also on the USWNT that, hey, they have some friendlies this week against Nigeria. And, uh, you know, Trinity Rodman is now, I think, the highest play, paid player on the, in the league, she's had to withdraw for personal reasons uh, this week, no, and nothing uh, untoward, just the, for personal reasons, personal events. And replacing her on the team, and who's getting the first call up, is racing Louisville's midfielder Savannah Medimello. So that's exciting for her. She's under twenty three, but she's had a cracking season so far, and. Uh, had a solid rookie campaign with racing Louisville. So good luck to her. Um, nervous moment, though. I mean, even though it's a friendly, can you imagine being called up to the squad, Nancy, when with those veterans? It must be a little bit intimidating. Yeah, pretty daunting. I think especially when you're seeing them play so well in the NWSL as well. But, yeah, good good luck to them. And I'm sure they're, you know, if they've been called up, they're, they're worthy of, of the call-up. So hopefully they have that confidence. Totally, absolutely, yeah. Good luck to Savannah. All right, let's talk about uh, what's happening across the pond then, because the one player who had to miss out for Spain on the, in the Euros, she got uh, some reward, didn't she, uh, just this past week, uh, despite being off injured. Yep. So um, Alexia Pateas, the 
a uh, Spanish and Barcelona midfielder. Um, she was named uh, UEFA Women's Player of the Year for last season. Um, and she has become the first player to win that award uh, two years in a row. Uh, so really impressive. Um, she did, like you said, she missed out on the Euros uh, because she tore her ACL in training just before, which I'm sure she would have been gutted about. But she had a really good domestic season with Barcelona uh, before the tournament, which saw her win um, the vote for that award. Um, so she scored 34 goals um, as um Barcelona won basically every trophy possible bar the Champions League, but they did get to the final. Um, and I think when you consider 34 goals when she's a midfielder, that that's pretty impressive. He also finished as the Champions League top goal scorer uh, for last season with 11 goals um, and was named player of the season as well. Um, and she scored eight goals in 12 games for Spain and became the first woman to win 100 caps for her nation. So, yeah, it's, it, it was such a big blow when she got injured just before the Euros and those stats tell you exactly why she is the best women's player um, in in the world. Well, we're not, definitely in Europe we're not sure about the world because we haven't seen Spain and uh, the US play too many times but yeah it's um, hopefully this award is is uh, kind of a bit of motivation for her as she's recovering from her ACL yes absolutely and didn't she look fabulous at the awards yeah she did yeah obviously um, yeah probably <laughs> I was thinking she'd normally probably be like uh, you know doing pre-season or playing for Barca or Spain but she's yeah obviously got time to get a bit dressed up for yeah, the award ceremony. She, she certainly did get a bit dressed up. Well, we should mention the runner-up in those rankings uh, who had her herself an absolute bumper Euros was England's Beth Mead. Yeah, so um, Beth Mead was the Golden Boot winner at the Euros and she was named player of the tournament as well. So absolutely brilliant, like really um, helped England to their Euros title. And prior to the, to the tournament, she had also had a pretty good season for Arsenal, um, scoring and setting up a lot of goals as well. Um, so it was a pretty a pretty close call. I think Alexia was just so dominant in her for in like her domestic league for Barcelona when Beth Mead, I don't think you could say she was necessarily the best player in the WSL last season. Um, but yeah, I think... Uh, great to see Mead on the list there and, and I'm hoping personally as an Arsenal and England fan she will continue um, her brilliant form uh, in the season starting in a couple of weeks. Yeah absolutely um, and a shout out to Lena Oberdorf the German player who plays for Wolfsburg on four, um, 47 points uh, in those rankings 97 for Alexia and Beth 84 and then Lena 47 and it goes down to Alex Pop. 35 and then 25 and then it really does drop considerably in terms of their points but I want to also mention Kira Walsh because she's been in the news this week Manchester City and England player uh, because talking about Barcelona they really wanted to get her didn't they they made what four offers before um, Manchester City finally gave in yeah, I'm not, and also I don't, I'm not sure if it's been fully confirmed by the club um, that they have given in. So I think at the moment she is still a Man City player. But yeah, Barcelona are trying really, really hard to get her. Um, but I think when you watch her at the Euros, you understand why because she's quite underrated and actually doesn't score loads of goals. But from where she is in midfield, she just runs the show basically. Um, and I know a lot of people were quite annoyed that she wasn't included on the Ballon d'Or um, list. Uh, nomination list um, so it's good to see that she's got some recognition in, in this awards um, finishing six, six in the list yeah and um, you know it just makes sense I'm sure Kira wants to go to Barcelona because her girlfriend's there Lucy Bruns yeah of course it's obviously quite a strong reason for her to go as well um, as well as playing for the best team in the world Oh, right. Yeah, you can't beat that, can you? Um, let's mention uh, Ellen White because uh, she retired from uh, last week. We we reported that how the Lioness uh, player had 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 retired, um, but there was a reason for that. She revealed a, 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 it was a serious injury that she had, which we heard about at the time. But this is the reason for her retirement. Yeah, it's quite shocking. I think. Um the full extent of the injury wasn't um, talked about that much. I think at the time when they said um, that she was, I remember she wasn't playing for City um, when she came back from the Olympics and it was, I can't remember how they described the injury, but it was um, 
is just kind of like a health, they called it like a health problem or something like that. But yeah, she revealed that she actually had a punctured lung from, um, which came from receiving acupuncture treatment. Um, so when she came back from the Olympics last year, she was suffering from back spasms. Um, and City at the time um, had quite a, well, yeah, it was obviously very well known that they had a really serious injury crisis. So they had a lot of players um needing treatment. So they arranged for Ellen White to um, meet with an elite sports physiotherapist uh, to give her the acupuncture last August. Um, But during the treatment, there was a rare occurrence and her lung was punctured, um, which is, yeah. I mean, um, she did come back pretty quickly. I think it was only a matter of weeks when, uh, during which she recovered and and came back. But um, she kind of talked about how it was, it was really traumatic and it was something that uh, she was still working through. I think the process of her recovering from it. So yeah, it just sounded quite um, serious and she probably was a bit scared that she wasn't going to be able to be, be playing again. Um, but she did make it back and it's, but it's obviously had a bit of an impact on, on her career and she's decided now to retire. Um, yeah, it's just, it just sounds a bit sad because um, it sounds like before that, that acupuncture incident she might not have been retiring at the end of the year um and just for me it was a bit shocking I think that it could happen to a professional footballer um obviously accidents do happen but I don't think you necessarily expect like you know professional footballer to be in a situation where their lung could be punctured because of uh treatment that they're having um so yeah it was just quite shocking but I suppose at least in in her for her she has ended on a on a high by winning the Euros. Um, that is a really good way to go out, and hopefully she will kind of be able to stay within football, whether that's coaching or punditry. I'm not sure what she does want to do, but yeah, hopefully she can stay involved in some way. Yeah, for sure. But that's it's really scary. I've had acupuncture many many times, and that's now made me nervous thinking that could possibly happen yeah. to anybody. It doesn't matter who they are. It can. It's a freak accident. So, well, at least, um, you know, she got, she was able to get fit again and uh, she's doing okay. And yeah, I think uh, finding now that now is the time to change direction and and maybe take the pressure off, you know, because that would be a little bit scary, no doubt. Um, But um, whilst we're talking about Ellen being off the team and just got also retiring, uh, do do you want to shout out to anybody that's new on that squad? Because the Lionesses have gathered again in training camp now, ready for their first World Cup qualifier against Luxembourg at the weekend. Yeah, it's quite uh, quite interesting how already the squad has already changed quite a bit. So you've had Ellen White and... um, Jill Scott retire and a few injuries like Chloe Kelly's out injured so been a bit of a chance for some um, new people to come in so um, Ebony Salmon and uh, Lauren James they're two young players who have come in to the attack which is quite exciting Uh, also really glad to see Jordan Nobbs back in the England squad Um, been very unfortunate with uh, injuries and and um, yeah, it was a real shame she missed out on the Euros. So hopefully with that space opening up in midfield with Jill Scott retiring, that's that's going to be Jordan Nobbs' space to come in, have a really good injury-free season and, yeah, get cement that position in midfield for herself. So what do you anticipate the outcome would be against, you know, a team like Luxembourg shouldn't be too challenging for them? Yeah, you. I mean, you never want to be, like, arrogant or cocky or anything, but... I would be very surprised if they didn't uh, win against Luxembourg. Just, just you know, if you look at the, the, obviously England is a team made up of full-time professional players and that's not the case with Luxembourg. So the quality obviously can be quite a big disparity in quality. Um, that's not to say they should go in and be really, um, you know, think the game's already won, but I would be pretty surprised if they if they didn't win that game. Yeah. And the next game is also World Cup qualifier. Yeah. Yeah, against Austria. So, um, our uh, yeah, Austria always interesting. Played them at the Euros. It always seems to be a one nil win to England. They they are a really tough team. Um, very like defensively sound, very organised. Um, they did actually in the Euros they had their quarterfinal quarterfinals against Germany and they did hold off the Germans for quite a bit and it did look a bit ropey uh, for the Germans in that match. So they are a really really good team. Um, 
yeah, we, we only need a point from those two matches to qualify. So I expect that to come against Luxembourg. And then who knows what will happen against Austria. Maybe Serena Fiegman will use that as more of an experimental game. So maybe it will be less about the result. But again, yeah, you, you would expect England to, to win that one. Are we ex- surprised, and, and I'm thinking only just of the Euros, Nancy, that Austria are as good as they are? Or, or am I just not knowing what... You know the history with Austria. When you know, did that? Do they have that kind of a record? Um, and or is this a surprise that they are um, as a strong a team as they are? I think I think they've always been a bit of a surprise package. They only made their like international tournament debut into 2017 at, at the, that Euros, but they did go all the way to the semi final. So they took people by surprise a lot then, um, and they do have quite. A lot. They they do have a, f- a fair amount of good players. Uh, players that play in the WSL, like well, Manu Zinsberger and Laura Weinrofer. They both play for Arsenal. Um, they have uh, Nicole Biller, the striker. She was she's um, current. I think it's Hoffenheim that she plays for, but she was named like German Football of the Year, as in football footballer of the year in the German league. Um, I think it was last season. So they do have some really really good players. Um, so yeah, I think they're always just a little bit of a surprise package, but probably they're then going to develop into a team that is just known as being a pretty decent team, really. Yeah. Well, that'll be interesting to, to follow. Obviously, this weekend's going to be fun with the new players, both here at the USWNT and then and then with your Lionesses, seeing how those new p- players you know, um, merge in with the veterans and the regulars. And, yeah, we'll be trying to watch both. Somehow I have to recall one. Hopefully the Lionesses uh, game will be somewhere accessible for us here. So uh, if not, I may have to scream at you, you know, (laughs) text you uh, for updates, Nancy, because I'm sure you'll be glued to the screen. Yeah, no, I'd, I'd, I'll be watching both matches. Yeah, very yeah. excited for those. It, now, it, it, is that on mainstream TV, the Lionesses game? Um, yeah, I think they'll they're be on um, ITV, I believe. So, yeah, we'll be on Square TV, yeah. Good. On a major network, yeah. Great. All right. Well, more of that, of course, next week. We'll have the results uh, and our own critique of, of those games for you on the show next week. I want to go back to tennis real quickly, and it's a little bit of a surprise. Maybe it's not, but if you didn't know, would you have guessed who was currently ranked number two in the highest paid tennis players? That's male and female. I, because oh, I, I, well, I've looked at, I've been kind of on top of this data for like, just not, just not just tennis, just like sports women and stuff in, in general. So, if I was to write the list, I think I would include the player. Um, but if I was completely fresh to this, just kind of like with a little bit of knowledge of of, of tennis, I wouldn't say this player, no. No, okay. Based on results for the past year. All right, well, we can reveal that it is no, Naomi Osaka, but she's currently ranked 44 in the WTA, rank, WTA rankings, and she has been plagued by injury as well. But... Her value has not dropped. She's worth fifty-five million off court, Nancy. That's not a bad pay packet, is it? No, I wouldn't complain about that. <laughs> and she's topped Serena Williams. So no, Serena Williams is number three. Serena, of course, has announced that she will be stepping back from tennis after the U.S. Open. Um, so t- tell us a little bit more about those rankings, Nancy. And uh, if there's any surprises there, um, I mean, it's it's interesting. I think there's a surprise for me. There's, there is a surprise further down the rankings. Um, but how they mix with the men's um, values right now. Yeah, I think this is definitely to, within the top 10. Yeah, there's four women and six men. So just in my opinion, it's probably one of the only sports, I think the only sport where if you were to list the highest earning um athletes or players from the sport that there would be any women involved whatsoever so that's always interesting to see women and a top men um Federer is number one but then yeah you've got Osaka and you've got Serena Williams um and then just the big names Nadal Djokovic and I think I'm going to presume maybe this is your surprise with Emma Raducanu at number six I am surprised she's worth 18 million off court yeah 
So because she's so young, and in, in, in this has really obviously increased exponentially over the last twelve months since she won the U.S. Open. Yeah, and I, I mean, I think that with this list, and any of the listeners can look at it after. It's always um, the off court compared to on court earnings because yeah, for the majority of them. I mean, if you look at Serena Williams, it's uh, zero point one million dollars on court compared to thirty five million dollars off court, and then uh, Venus Williams is down at number nine, and she's zero point zero three million dollars on court, and then twelve million dollars off court. And same with Raducanu. I mean, she's earned a fair chunk on court of three point one million, but eighteen million dollars off court. I yeah. think it it shows kind of the power of having brands involved um and willing to be like sponsoring and endorsing these these uh female athletes because that in sport it does seem to be where you know the, the money really comes from um and yeah that that's that's essentially why these women are on this list more than the kind of the prize which the prize money they get in tennis is a lot still but yeah it's the the, the real weight here is is the endorsements and the brands getting involved in in the sport Yes, it really is. And it shows that they, you know, where these women are being backed. Now, the Williams sisters, of course, don't have such a high profile on court these days, but they still have generated a great deal uh, through their own personal branding, which they have focused on extensively during the course of their career. Uh, so, yeah, they don't have to worry about their pension, I don't think, those two. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, good luck to Emma. I hope she keeps that up because that's really, really impressive. And I think, fair to say, she's she's a very popular, very, very likable, very marketable young lady. I mean, at only nineteen, but she has got a, a great persona, hasn't she? And she's very sportsmanlike. So I'd imagine brands just love her. Definitely, I think um, even even yeah. Just her story as well. I think, you know, coming as a qualifier, winning the US Open, it's very inspirational. And like you said, she's very, um, you know, when she speaks to the media, she does seem quite a likable person. So, yeah, brands obviously um, really want to back her. And because she is so young, even though she's not doing, you know, maybe performing at her best on court, you know that she has time to to become a real superstar, which I, I think is what these brands are literally banking on um, almost a long-term investment in her. Yes, the kind of investment they put in the Williams sisters, really, over the years. Exactly, you know, they look yeah. Right. Cool. All right. Uh, we're going to turn to tennis, and we've uh, – not to tennis, to motor racing now from tennis. And we've really found, I think, uh, in motor racing the – uh, tennis equivalent, the Andy Murray equivalent uh, in motor racing in the form of uh, the current leader of the Formula One in men's, Sebastian Vettel. He's actually defending women and he's speaking out against um, the, what we reported last week, the, the Formula One boss, Stefano Domicinale, who said that it was very unlikely that women would be um, racing in Formula One in 20, before 2027. Well, Sebastian has other thoughts about that. Yeah, and it's so nice to see these like prolific sports people speak up about it. So he um, he um, said that the choice it was a very unlucky unlucky choice of words. He and he didn't see a reason why we can't have a woman on the grid. Um, and he also kind of just went. He really he explained why he thought it was wrong, which is I thought was quite good because it shows that he has you know an actual real understanding of of why those words are kind of so damaging. Um, yeah, he said that it's statements like that, which I guess women or girls are probably confronted with when growing up and sharing their dreams. Um, and then the father might have read those words and say, "You do like you do like other things. Why not focus on other things?" And then yeah, this the the girls that you know are dispersuaded from getting involved in motorsport, like you know they go and follow something else because they've basically been told that they they can't do it or they won't make it in five years or whatever. And that is kind of exactly it. Like that, you know, that it's not helpful having people saying i don't think this is going to happen like there's been so many times in history where someone said i don't think this is going to happen and then like a female athlete or even outside of sport a woman has like proved them wrong and and you know broken broken boundaries um so yeah really and it's disappointing that it came from, you know, the number one, you know, the, the, the Formula One leader there, Domenicali, who, you know, really he should be, you know, a voice for women in the sport. 
yeah, it's that's it. I think it's obviously that attitude has come from the top, which is very dispiriting. Um, and there are things happening in, in motorsport like the W Series, which are, are helping. But, you know, we've, we've talked about this before, but the fact that Jamie Chadwick has won two and is on her way to win a, a third title and that there is no progression from W Series. Um, so there's definitely more that can be done. And then it is just dispiriting to hear the person that's in charge of it kind of have a bit of a backwards attitude or just not a very encouraging attitude I think um so yeah fair play to Vettel for speaking out against it and and hopefully um trying to at least trying to change some attitudes yeah well done Sebastian thank you and I hope Domenicali got the message (laughs) you think you know these people like like Sebastian Vettel any you know of the leading drivers um they have a platform they have uh, you know, a voice, and people will listen to them. So, hopefully, that voice is more powerful than Stefano Domenicali. Anyway, all right, enough of that. Um, what else have we got? We've got a story from Afghanistan. Um, this is really, really tragic, Nancy. Where did you find that? Yeah, so this is in the eye. Um, it's uh, an it's exclusive. The eye. Oh, it's a newspaper. Um, news website uh, in England. It's it's really good actually. Um, it's just got quite uh, progressive um, articles. It's meant to be like completely independent of any, you know, like. So it's like the independent newspaper. It is. It yeah. They have very similar names, but it is separate. So the I yeah the I and the independent are very separate, but um, very just similar kind of like editorial, um, you know, line. Um, but yeah, this this uh, exclusive was by um, Asma Day, and it's I just yeah I read it this week and I just found it um, really interesting. So I thought it was just worth talking about it a bit on on the show. Um, and it was um, an interview with a woman called Nahid who uh, she didn't want to say her surname so she wouldn't put her family at risk. But um, she has been living in Britain since 2016 and is a British citizen now. Sorry, she's been. She was a British citizen in 2016, so I imagine she's been here longer than that. Um, but she still has family left in Afghanistan, and um, a lot of them are quite involved in women's sport. So her sister played football in Afghanistan at a national level. Um, her sister-in-law played basketball nationally, and her father was a football player who helped pioneer women's football in the country. So obviously, a really heavy involvement in women's sport uh, but Nahid just uh, in this kind of interview talks about um, how against women's sport the Taliban are um, and you know what they're doing to, to women in the country that um, follow or support women's sport or are involved in it in some ways um, and yeah she she just basically just kind of says how terrified she is for her family over there um, and she's campaigning to get a family brought over here because they're at risk. So, yeah, it's definitely, it's obviously a lot longer and, and goes into more depth than that. But I'd say it's definitely worth a read because it really just kind of hits home how difficult that situation must be over there. And, yeah, how sad it is that women in Afghanistan can't follow their passion and, and get involved in sport. Yeah, I, to the point where the Taliban actually view women's sports as neither appropriate or necessary and... and and it is heartbreaking for them when you know when they have to discard and uh, and destroy any traces of of you know memorabilia um, and they're going door to door aren't they to to actually hunt down these women that are involved in sports it's pretty shocking yeah it is it is really shocking i think it, I, that, and i think you know over here it's kind of like sport can be a bit trivial and it's just you know it's like a hobby basically but in those situations it does show it, it, it can be like life and death and it's yeah it's very shocking yeah all right well they're the main stories we've got this week nancy what's happening in your sports world and are you kicking a football yet um, I'm not. I'm not. So I, yeah, I was playing for a team, uh, but they've had a bit of a summer break, and I'm it, the team that I was playing for. It was uh, a group of friends from uni, um, but I think I might find a different one just because it was quite a commute across London. It took me like an hour to get there and an hour back. So um, I'm going to have a look around, see if there's any teams uh, closer to me, um, just to save a bit of time, really. Um, but yeah, hopefully get getting back to 
playing football again soon, running, I've lapsed a little bit, so I also need to get back into a routine for that. But yeah, I'm sure as um as the weather's getting cooler and, and autumn's kicking in, it's just quite a good thing to get back into. Well, you'll need your running for football anyway, right? Yeah, as well as exactly. your Yeah, as well as it's your bigger goal to, to do is it to do a half marathon or a full marathon next year? Um, I think probably half marathon. Um, I'll see what happens, but I think, yeah, I'd like to do more half marathons and get faster at those. Um, and just a marathon is uh, is very time consuming, so I think I'd want to space them out a bit, a bit longer. Yeah, you're not quite ready to give up your day job, are you, to become a full time <laughs> athlete? No, not. Not can't really go down the Ashley Barty path quite yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have you heard anything of what Ash is doing, by the way? Um, no, I've I've seen clips here and there of her playing golf. Um, obviously, she got married, um, but apart from that, not not really. Um, yeah, just just quite seems to just be enjoying life. Yeah, good for her. Oh, well, meanwhile, over here, uh, I did a 20-mile ride yesterday, just a training ride. I always got to try and do a little bit more at a weekend and looking forward to doing a, a long ride. Maybe not as long as we did in the spring. Maybe I'll do my really long ride in the spring again, but we'll do another ride with my friend Marcy Cornegay when she finishes the Pacific Crest Trail. Um and then I spotted Nancy. This um, there's a, there is actually a three thousand mile ride from Maine to Florida. Now I've got that in my head. Yeah, three thousand miles would be very very impressive. Um, so is, yeah, is, you it might worthy, to... is, is it worthy of an Olympic medal or an Oscar possibly? I'll oh yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> you should make if you should make your own medals for the end because that is definitely worth a full of uh, trophy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that would be great fun. But uh, what, what a challenge that would be! Wouldn't that be fun to do? Yeah, that that would be very impressive. Um, yeah, yeah it, well, it, yeah, it would be like I think the training for that would be very intense. But then obviously, well worth it at the end. Very satisfying when you do if you do finish it. Yeah. Well, there's no if if we start. It, well, yeah, if you do it, you'll finish it. I'm sure, yeah. but. Yeah, got to persuade Marcy to do that first. <laughs> What's that? You've got to persuade Marcy to, to do yes, that. Yes, exactly. And, you know, meanwhile, I've got to work and earn a living, so I think we might have to do it in stages. So, uh, But yeah. I think the, the prospects are, uh, are there. Now I know that it's a possibility. All right. Uh, when, uh, in the meanwhile, Nancy, what are you writing about this week? Um, well, we've got the US Open, of course, um, and the start of the WSL is uh, the 10th of September so starting to do some preview stuff for that um, tomorrow I'm going to Sky Sports Studio actually because they've got a bit of a media day with some of the pundits so going over there and yeah just kind of um, anticipation for the new season ramping up so mainly kind of focusing on, on those things Good, good, alright and when when does the season start so when do you go to your first game? Yeah, te- it's the 10th of September Um I think that's uh, Man U versus Tottenham. Um, and then there's five other games on the 11th of September. So the weekend after next, it will be kicking off again. Oh, gets going again. And you're, you're actually on, as we record, it's a bank holiday for you, isn't it? It is, It is, but I am, I am working today because I don't get bank holidays. Because okay. sport, sport doesn't get bank holidays, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, it has been bank holiday weekend, Um which has been really nice. It's just always a little bit more relaxed and stuff when it's a bank holiday. So, yeah. Yeah. And we've got a holiday next weekend. So, and But no, it doesn't make any difference to us. But there we go. All right, Nancy, just remind everybody where they can find your writings and how they can f- uh, track you on social media. Yeah. So I'm on Twitter at Nancy underscore Gillen. And my Instagram handle is Nancy Gillen underscore sport. And then... Yeah, right for Give Me Sport Women and our Twitter handle if you want to find us on, on there is at Give Me Sport W. All right. And we're at With Sports, of course, on social media and with sports.com online. And if you want to reach out to us to do to cover any stories that you think we're missing in women's sports, you can always email us to info at with sports.com or drop us a message on uh, comment on social media too. That that will work if you think we're missing any stories in women's sports that we should be covering and it doesn't matter what the sport as long as women do it well nancy i'll be we'll be back next week this was a short week for us because we were late last week 
Um, but we're back on track now. So next week we'll have some football to talk about the results of these friendlies over here and your um, World Cup qualifiers in the UK. Yeah, a lot a lot going on. So, yeah, really looking forward to it. Yeah, and of course the first week of the US Open to talk about. So hopefully the players that Nancy has mentioned do progress to the second week there in New York. So we can talk about that. But in the meantime, thank you for tuning in as always and enjoy your sport. We'll see you next week. 